Maia Campbell was one of the most promising young black actresses in the 1990s after landing roles in South Central, Thea, Poetic Justice, and In the House. Before she could really make a long-lasting impact in Hollywood, her life went on a downward spiral. She lost numerous people she was close to and ventured down a path that has saddened many of her fans and supporters. Don't forget, you can gain access to this audio and one unreleased video per month on the RRG Patreon. Details are in the description box. Now, let's get into today's video. Maia Campbell was born on November 26, 1976 in Tacoma Park, Maryland to Elizabeth B.B. Moore Campbell, a New York Times best-selling author, and Tico Campbell, an architect and author. The family of three moved to California when Maia was seven. Her parents eventually divorced and her mom married a man named Ellis Gordon in 1984. Maia spent her summers in Philadelphia studying theater. And in 1993, 16-year-old Maia landed a role of Shantae in Poetic Justice. From there, she secured the role of Nicole on the critically acclaimed sitcom South Central. After graduating from high school, she enrolled at Spelman College, but her studies were interrupted when her agent called and said Quincy Jones wanted her to audition for a new TV sitcom. She told Parlay Magazine she went in and auditioned for the role of Tiffany Warren for the show In the House, starring LL Cool J, Kim Wayans, and Alfonso Ribeiro. Maia said she put her all into the audition and landed the role of the drama queen character. Tiffany! Tiffany! You don't have to yell, I'm right here. The show premiered in 1995, and Maia's portrayal of Tiffany earned her a Young Artist Awards nomination. She told Parlay Magazine, I grew up on the show. The cast and team were like my second family. Maia continued to build her acting resume while appearing on In the House. She landed roles on shows like Beverly Hills 90210, Moesha, and Sister Sister. She also appeared in the music video for Tyrese's songs, Sweet Lady and Lately. Maia was the it girl of the 90s, along with her best friend and fellow actress, Tatiana Ali. While numerous male entertainers had their eyes on her, Maia decided to settle down with a man named Elias Gutierrez, and they were married in 1998. In 1999, In the House wrapped after five seasons. A little while later, Maia and her husband welcomed their daughter, Elizabeth Elisha Gutierrez, in 2000. Even though things started out promising, Maia and her family were headed down a rocky road. According to Ebony Magazine, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder shortly after the show came to an end. A year after having her daughter, she stopped taking her medication, which allegedly led to the deterioration of her marriage and also affected her parenting abilities. She lost custody of her daughter, and she and Elias got divorced in 2002. As Maia battled her issues, she continued to land roles throughout the 2000s, but they were smaller and less prominent. In 2005, Maia's mom, Bibi, released a book entitled 72-Hour Hold. The fictional story detailed a mother's anguish as she deals with her daughter's bipolar diagnosis. In the book, the daughter is paranoid, wild, acting out physically, while leaving her own mom feeling scared and frightened. To this day, many people believe the book was Bibi's cry for help and a look into her attempts to get Maia the help she needed. Maia's world completely crumbled when her mom was diagnosed with brain cancer in February 2006. Nine months later, her mom succumbed to the disease at the age of 56. To make things even more heartbreaking, her mom passed away one day before Maia's birthday. She opened up years later during an episode of Ayanla Fix My Life and admitted her substance issues kept her away from her mom during her final days. Maia told Kempire Radio after losing her mom, she took things out on herself. She hit the streets and tried to see what was out there to numb the pain. She added, It didn't work for me. I got into trouble with some people. I hurt myself a lot. In May 2007, Maia made the news multiple times. But for all the wrong reasons. First, a since-deleted video of her without any clothes on and singing an Ashanti song was shared by Media Takeout. The gossip website alleged Maia made the video in exchange for substances, but that allegation couldn't be confirmed. Sources reported Maia had been wandering around Germantown, Philadelphia for the past few months, but no one wanted to believe the beautiful and lovable actress had fallen on hard times. Weeks after the troubling video of her singing was released, another allegation surfaced. 
This time, a Philly man named Kevin Taylor said he borrowed his dad's Jeep and was driving around town with his friend Steve Johnson and Maia. They stopped at Steve's house to pick up some music equipment and left Maia in the car while they ran inside. When they came back, Maia and the Jeep were gone. During the next few years, Maia was reportedly spotted out and about. In August 2010, a video of Maia sitting in the passenger side of a car popped up on World Star Hip Hop. The man recording questioned, taunted, ridiculed, and solicited her as Maia threatened him and urged him to leave her alone. When the driver of the car returned and told her to stop talking to his people that way, Maia made a comment that shocked everyone. Get the camera out of my face! Get me off the block! Yeah, take her home. Hey, what the f*** is up with you? I'm gonna get beat up now. You all right, you all right. I'll get beat up and you all right. After the video went viral, Maia's stepfather, Ellis Gordon Jr., released a statement saying their family had been struggling with her mental health issues for a while, and she was finally in a facility to obtain the treatment she needed. He added, We ask that you not only pray for Maia's wellness, but also commit to understanding this insidious disease, which is devastating our loved ones and community. In February 2010, Maia was spotted looking better than ever, but it didn't last long. By July of that year, she was charged with possession of a controlled substance, driving under the influence, driving without a license, and a probation violation. According to HuffPost, instead of getting locked up, she was sent to a mandatory mental health facility. Maia decided to live in a residential treatment center to get her life on track, and her goal was to transition to living on her own. Her biological father passed away in February 2012, although it's unclear how his passing affected Maia. That same year, she appeared on Block Talk Radio and said she was making music and also landed a few movie roles. She also mentioned she was trying to get in contact with Tyler Perry to see if he'd be interested in turning one of her mom's novels into a movie. Things were really looking up for her. In November 2012, she took a bigger step in her recovery by appearing on Ayala Fix My Life. During the episode, Maia explained, There's a lot of pain that goes into my story, a lot of issues with my mom. Maia had a deep conversation with her daughter, who was 12 years old at the time. She promised to mend their broken relationship and hoped to regain custody of her one day. In a 2013 interview with Parlay Magazine, Maia said appearing on Ayala's show was the right choice. She said the show not only helped her with her healing, but it also helped to establish a better relationship with her family. Things were really starting to look up in October 2013 when she told the Tom Joyner show she moved out of the treatment center and got her own place. She said she was spending a lot of time with her family and was counting all her blessings. She was also proud to announce her relationship with her daughter was back on track. Sadly, more trouble was reported in February 2015. TMZ reported Maia cussed out a family at an Atlanta Burger King and accused the child of stealing her wallet. When the police came, she called the cop a derogatory term. She denied the allegation, but a month later, it was reported she caused a scene at a Waffle House in Riverdale, Georgia, while under the influence. When the cops came, they gave her a chance to leave, but she refused and instead got booked for disorderly conduct. Maia reportedly reached out to Iyanla again for help in October 2015, but according to Maia's manager, Iyanla exploited Maia and turned her back on her. In 2016, Maia appeared on the reality show From the Bottom Up to detail her struggles, and in 2017, Straight from the A shared a video of Maia looking almost unrecognizable, begging the guy who was recording to give her substances. LL Cool J caught wind of the video and went on social media to ask how he could get in contact with the actress. In a tweet, he also encouraged people to stop recording Maia and lend her a helping hand instead. The guy behind the camera defended himself in an Instagram video and said people were just mad because she was a black actress they knew from back in the day. He also added, This ain't no mental disorder. This is just high as even though LL wanted to help her, Maia insisted she was okay. We're good. I'm good. I'm doing property. I have investments. I'm a real serious person. And my show is called From the Bottom of Season 2. When the man filming asked her how LL could get in contact with her, Maia blurted out some contact info, including her deceased mom's phone number. Feeling defeated, LL eventually tweeted, You can't help someone who doesn't want your help. 
Things were quiet for Maia up until May 2020, when it was reported she got locked up in Atlanta for her involvement in a street racing incident. Months later, A.T. Elian obtained a video of Maia asking for money in downtown Atlanta. Another video showed a woman trying to buy a barefoot Maia a pair of shoes. As we look back on Maia's life and career, our hearts break for her and her family. We wish her nothing but the best and hope she's able to get the help she needs and deserves. Let us know your thoughts on what happened to Maia Campbell. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.